Hi guys, I'm Karunya Rao and in Ideas for Profit, we tell you why you should take a bite of Burger King India. The company has announced a proposed acquisition of 85% stake in Sari Burger Indonesia. Like the Indian market, Burger King will have exclusive rights to operate its franchise in the Indonesian market till 2039, which would open a huge growth opportunity for the company as it has highlighted an aggressive store expansion strategy with focus on adding new items to its menu. Moreover, the acquisition is at an attractive valuation and provides a scope of re-rating. The inorganic opportunity would fast-track Burger King India's growth prospects and establish it as a strong QSR player. Let's take a closer look at the potential deal. Now, what we understand is that Burger King India plans to acquire FNB Asia Ventures 85% stake in BK Indonesia. BK Indonesia manages and operates Burger King brand in Indonesian market and it's also the fastest growing QSR chain with a revenue category of 37% from 2016 to 2020. BK Indonesia is the second largest QSR chain in the country. It has exclusive rights for the country till 2039. Now, the deal values BK Indonesia at an enterprise value of $183 million. Do remember it has debt worth $30 million, so the equity value is pegged close to $153 million. Burger King India will pay about $130 million for acquiring that 85% stake. The acquisition, of course, is subject to board and shareholder approval and completion of due diligence. Let's also understand the potential offered by Indonesia. It has the fourth largest population in the world. It has favorable demographics with 60% of the population below the age of 35. Per capita income of the market is expected to grow at a healthy 7% CAGR over the medium term. Food spending is about 20% of the GDP with QSRs expected to grow at 11% CAGR over the medium term, thus providing a strong growth opportunity for QSR players like Burger King India. Post the acquisition, Burger King would almost double the store count to 330 stores over the next five years from current 174 stores, indicating a 14% CAGR. BK Indonesia will penetrate Tier 1 to Tier 3 cities in the country, closing the gap with the market leader. BK Indonesia will introduce breakfast menu and also BK cafes. Both breakfast as well as cafes are new offerings aimed to boost the average daily sales. Management expects the cafe business alone to add about 20% incrementally to average daily sales. BK Indonesia also aims to strengthen the chicken offerings aiming to improve the average daily transactions. BK Indonesia's EBITDA margins at store level improved by 160 basis points and by 470 basis points at company level over the last four years as it rapidly scaled up its operations. With more expansion in its operations, BK Indonesia margins are expected to improve even further. Moreover, BK Indonesia is focused on opening standalone outlets rather than outlets in the mall. Currently, the operations are skewed towards small stores, which form about 50% of the count, while FSDT, which is standalone format, that contributes 40%. According to the company, FSDT format has advantages of lower rental costs, longer operating hours compared to mall stores, resulting in better margin profile. While the capex for new FSDT stores is higher compared to malls, the stronger earnings profile provides shorter payback period and higher return on invested capital. As per the company, there is potential to open more than 200 stores given the availability of retail space and competition footprint. The combined entity of Burger King India and BK Indonesia would be much bigger given the comparable revenue size and EBITDA margins. Burger King would fund the acquisition through equity issuance. At current market price, Burger King India will issue about 5.59 crore shares to raise about 955 crores resulting in a dilution of close to 13% on post-issue capital. BK Indonesia's store addition at a 14% CAGR is comparable to Burger King India's store addition CAGR of 18% over next 5-6 to six years. Also, BK Indonesia and Burger King's revenue as well as EBITDA margins are comparable. Now, considering that, the proposed acquisition of BK Indonesia at EV sales of 1.8x and EV EBITDA of 15x pre-pandemic is at a steep discount of 76-78% to 78%, respectively to Burger King's valuations. If BK Indonesia multiples were to re-rate to Burger King's level, the overall business is likely to see incremental addition of 2,900 crores worth market cap adjusted for equity dilution to fund the deal. With the acquisition, Burger King India's growth prospects are expected to improve further. Moreover, the acquisition is at an attractive valuation and hence we recommend investors to add the stock to their portfolio.